The Titan III rocket. If you aren't familiar with rocketry, you probably haven't heard of it. But despite its obscurity, it's one of my personal favorites. Something about its rugged functionality makes for an aesthetic all its own. The first Titan variant was the Titan III-A. It was a single core testbed for the trans stage upper stage, meant for use on the Titan III-C. All the vehicles of the Titan family, including this one, were powered by the LR-87 rocket engine. Its gas generator cycle was fueled by Aerozine 50, a 50-50 mixture of hydrazine and UDMH, and its oxidizer was nitrogen tetroxide. Its hypergolic fuels have a fairly lackluster ISP of 164 seconds, but it was deemed an acceptable trade-off for the ease of use and familiarity with the fuel type. Its first flight was a failure as the trans stage failed to pressurize and the vehicle failed to reach orbit. The trans stage used pressure-fed AJ-10 engines that also used aerozine 50 and nitrogen tetroxide as a fuel. It was able to be restarted three times in the first six hours of the mission and saw use for 25 years across many Titan III variants. The Titan III-A's crowning achievement, besides proving the viability of the trans stage, was the launch of the Lingen Calibration Sphere, a hollow 1.12 meter steel sphere used for radar calibration even today, that still technically holds the record for the oldest operational spacecraft. The next step in Titan development, the Titan 3B, was in general terms a Titan 3A with an Agena upper stage stuck on top. The Agena upper stage could have an entire book written about it, so I won't get too far into its history. But suffice it to say, it ran on a UDMH and RFNA fueled XLR-81. The Titan 3B was created to launch the new generation of Keyhole KH-8 spy sats that famously had their film returned from orbit in small metal canisters fitted with parachutes that could be picked up by planes during their descent. The Titan 3B also had two main variants. One that was based off the Titan II first stage, designated as a Titan 23 or Titan 33, depending on the fairing configuration, and another that utilized stretch tanks and a larger booster, designated Titan 24 or 34, again depending on the fairing configuration. The Titan 3B was almost exclusively used for the launching of military spy sats of various flavors. The previously mentioned KH 8, the Jump Seat Signals Intelligence satellites, and the military communication satellites. In all of its various forms, the Titan 3B flew 82 times. Developed concurrently with the Titan 3B, the Titan 3C was a much improved version in terms of payload to LEO, with a relatively massive 13,100 kg payload compared to the 3,300 kg payload for the Titan 3B. This was largely thanks to the massive solid rocket boosters that were attached to the Titan. They were widely considered some of the most advanced SRBs in the world at the time thanks to their size and thrust vector control system, which injects nitrogen tetroxide into the exhaust flow, deflecting it and creating a torque in the opposite direction of the injected fluid. This explains the eye-catching orange tank on the side of the rocket. The Titan 3C also saw the return of the trans stage, which was replaced by the Agena in the Titan 3B. Most of the 36 launches of the Titan 3C were used to build out various military constellations. These include the Vela Hotel constellation, which is used to monitor compliance to the 1963 Partial Test Ban Treaty. The Defense Satellite Communication System was also launched by Titan, and it still provides satellite communication services to the Antarctic Station in McMurdo to this day. The Defense Support Program was also launched by Titan, and it detects intense sources of infrared emissions like nuclear weapons or missile launches. The constellation was even used to warn Israeli and Saudi forces of Iraqi Scud launches during Desert Storm. But one mission sticks out. In 1966, the Titan 3C launched a boilerplate version of the Gemini Manned Orbiting Laboratory. Constructed out of an oxidizer tank bolted to a trans stage with a refurbished Gemini capsule on top, this was supposed to be America's parallel to the Soviet Almaz program, but it was scrapped before crew missions were able to fly because the Defense Department figured unmanned spy satellites like the KH-7 and 8 were much cheaper, cheaper to construct and maintain. While the Titan 3C launched exclusively from Cape Canaveral, 
the Titan 3D only launched from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. The only difference between the two was the removal of the trans stage, turning the Titan 3D into a two-stage vehicle. It launched the KH-9 and KH-11 series of spy satellites, the KH-11 program being most famous for contributing the Hubble Space Telescope to NASA for conversion. The Titan 3D is most notable for having a flawless record, with 22 out of 22 missions being successes. Finally, the Titan 3E is mo likely the most famous of the Titan family. Its gimmick is a Centaur upper stage which makes it superb for launching deep space missions. And this was exactly how it was used. Every mission launched on the Titan 3E was a blockbuster exploration mission. A sharp contrast to the secret and military history of her siblings. The solar orbiting Helios A and B missions were both launched by the Titan 3E and Helios B held the space probe speed record for 30 years before it was broken by the Parker Solar Probe. The Viking 1 and 2 orbiters were launched as well, giving us the first clear pictures of the Red Planet, and a special configuration with an added Star 37E upper stage was responsible for launching the absolutely incredible Voyager missions, which need no introduction. The exploit of this intrepid pair gives the Titan 3E the distinction of being the only rocket to have launched an interstellar mission so far. The Titan 3 series of rockets are responsible for an entire generation of military satellite constellations that enhanced American security and power, while simultaneously inspiring humanity by constantly pushing the boundaries of deep space exploration and opening up the stars to a new generation. A fitting tribute to the often forgotten but industrious Titan 3 program.